The History of Sexuality, Volume 2, The Use of Pleasure, by Michel Foucault, first published in 1984, represents the second installment of his exploration of the history of sexuality and is a part of his broader examination of systems of thought and knowledge, epistemy. In this volume, Foucault turns his focus away from the Western modern era that he scrutinized in the first volume and towards the sexual ethics and practices of the ancient Greco-Roman world particularly during the early centuries of the Common Era. Foucault's analysis pertains to the techniques and discourses through which individuals were urged to regulate their sexual behavior according to certain ethical norms. He examines how the concept of sexual pleasure and its use was a critical element in the formation of moral subjectivity. Instead of looking for prohibitions and laws dealing with sexuality, Foucault investigates the technologies of the self, the ways in which people were encouraged to self-monitor and control their sexual desires to lead a more ethical life. Foucault identifies four main domains in which the ethics of pleasure and sexual conduct were developed, the dietetics, the economics, the erotics, and the aesthetics of existence. In the realm of dietetics, Foucault discusses the concern with managing the health of the body by controlling sexual acts and desires. The guiding questions here centered on how often and under what circumstances sexual activity should be pursued for the well-being of the body. Dietary regimens not only reflected physical concerns, but were also tied to the cultivation of self-mastery and moderation. The economics of sexuality refers to the household and the management of the oikos, focusing primarily on the role and conduct of free adult men, particularly the patriarchal figure. Within this sphere, the man was responsible for exercising moderation and managing his own desires as well as those of his dependents, ensuring that his exercise of pleasure did not disrupt the harmony of the household or the broader community. In terms of erotics, Foucault explores the art of love and the formation of relationships, particularly male homosexual relationships common in the Greco-Roman period. The concern here is not simply with the act of sex itself, but with the aesthetics of the relationship the form and intensity of the affection, and the reciprocal nature of the bond. Lastly, the aesthetics of existence concerns the more general issue of how individuals fashioned their lives as a work of art. Sexual pleasure was one of many elements that an individual could balance to live a stylish and ethical life. The use of pleasure within this aesthetic frame was not about suppressing desires, but about forming them as part of a balanced and beautiful lifestyle. A central argument in The Use of Pleasure is Foucault's rejection of the repression hypothesis that he previously discussed in the first volume of The History of Sexuality. This hypothesis posited that since the Victorian era, Western society has repressed sexuality. In this second volume, Foucault revises his approach and emphasizes how in the ancient world, the practice of the self, and not repression, was central to the shaping of sexual experience. Foucault illuminates how ancient sexual ethics were focused on the activity or practice of freedom rather than on adherence to a set of prohibitions. The key concern was how free men, as women, slaves, and children were expected to be governed by others, could use pleasure in a way that was in accordance with reason and aligned with the good life. This way, the ethical subject was not defined by obedience to a set of rules, but through the skilled exercise of freedom. Foucault distinguishes between aphrodisia, acts of pleasure, and ethics by demonstrating that the philosophy of the time was less concerned with categorizing actions as right or wrong and more with the approach to these actions. The ethical substance is located in the practices that help manage desires, and mastery over oneself becomes a virtue. The focus on intent rather than the act becomes a theme of how an ethical sexual lifestyle was conceived. The use of pleasure also examines the tension between pleasures and desires, where the latter is seen as a potentially troublesome force to be managed. The practices through which one gains mastery over these desires involve a range of strategies, including self-examination, verbalization of thoughts and actions, reflection on past experiences, and adoption of a regime of abstinences or measured indulgences. Foucault is not simply retelling the history of ancient sexual thought he uses his analysis to challenge contemporary ideas of sexuality. 
he encourages readers to consider how different historical periods have conceptualized and managed sexuality and to use this understanding to critique modern assumptions about sexual identity and normativity. Furthermore, Foucault argues that the ancient ethics of pleasure set up a complex relationship between power, knowledge, and the self where regulating one's pleasures was less about submission to social norms and more about the construction of an ethical self-identity. This entails a shift from being driven by pleasure to navigating pleasures in a way that reflects and cultivates personal ethical values. In conclusion, the use of pleasure advances Foucault's broader philosophical project by contributing to a genealogy of the modern subject through the study of self-forming practices, ethics, in ancient Greco-Roman society. The text challenges conventional narratives about the development of sexuality and highlights the active role of the individual in the creation and maintenance of personal and social ethics, framed not by strict prohibitions, but by the considered use of pleasure. Through a detailed exploration of primary sources and a critical engagement with classical philosophical texts, Foucault provides a deep, nuanced examination of the emergence and transformation of sexual ethics that can inform our understanding of the self, both in the past and present.